I have a sentence here which says, if I like tea or coffee, but I don't like tea, then I like coffee. What I want to do with this sentence is represent it as a propositional formula using variables like P and Q, and using operations like AND, OR, NOT, IMPLIES, and so on. The first thing I'm going to do to represent this as a formula is identify its structure, and the main structure is this IF, THEN. So there's a relationship between two parts of this sentence, which I'll draw a box around. This is the first part, that's the condition for my if then, and the consequence of that condition is I like coffee. Now the first part of this, which says I like tea or coffee but I don't like tea, again I can break this down into smaller sentences, I can break it down into smaller propositions. So the first part says I like tea or coffee, and the second part says I don't like tea. Notice that when I'm breaking this sentence into smaller pieces, each of the pieces is still a proposition. Each of the pieces is still something that's either true or false. So if I say, I like tea or coffee, that's either true or false. If I say, I don't like tea, that's also either true or false. And finally, I like coffee is also either true or false. There's one further step that I can take to break this down, which is on this word or. So this word or is like a connection between two parts of a sentence, and one of them is I like tea. Unfortunately, the other part of this sentence is just the word coffee, and the word coffee itself is not a proposition. Coffee is not something that's either true or false. But if I rephrase this in a subtly different way, if I say I like tea, or I like coffee, now this means exactly the same thing but the difference is that when I break this into pieces, those pieces are themselves propositions. Each of the parts of this sentence is either true or false in its own right. Now from here, it would be a good idea to introduce some variables because I have pieces that I can't break down any further. I have this piece that says, I like tea. I've got this other piece which says, I like coffee. So let's just say that I like tea, that's either true or false, let's call it P. P is either true or false, and then I like coffee, that's also either true or false, so let's call it Q. But Q is also either true or false. I have another instance of I like coffee over here, so this is also Q. And finally this part here which says I don't like tea. Well this is false when P is true, and it's true when P is false. So this is the negation of P, this is not P. That's the symbol for not in a propositional formula. So now that I've represented each of the parts of this sentence, what I need to do is also represent the connectives between them. This word or, for example, I have a logical or, which is this symbol. This word but does not correspond exactly with a logical connective. But if I think about what this really means, this part of the sentence says, I like tea or coffee, but I don't like tea. What I'm really saying when I say that is that both of these parts are true. I'm saying I like tea or coffee, and I'm also saying that I don't like tea. So to say that both of these things are true, the connective is a logical and. The English word but carries a bit more information, because we're saying that these are somehow opposed to each other. But if I'm just writing a propositional formula, then all I care about is what's true and what's false. So a logical AND is sufficient there. And finally, I have the IF THEN, which logically is the IMPLIES operation. Now to actually turn this into a formula, rather than just writing each of these symbols one by one, I need to also carry the information about the structure of the sentence, in particular, I like tea or I like coffee, this was a part by itself, so I'll want to have brackets around this when I write it. And then this part, I like tea or coffee, but I don't like tea, I'll also need brackets around that when I write it. So finally, when I turn this into a propositional formula, the result will be brackets, brackets, P or Q, close brackets, and not P, close brackets implies Q.
and this propositional formula represents the form of this sentence. To represent it fully, I would also need to give definitions of P and Q. So P means I like T, and Q means I like coffee. And now I fully translated this sentence into a propositional formula.